Hey there, everyone. My name is Era, and we're here for some. And this is. Oops, sorry. Uh, Henry Speedy Call Ninja. Um, anyway, we're here with some interesting uh, gameplay. We have a rescheduled Gleck match here today. I'm assuming this one was supposed to take place over spring break. Yep. I see. Okay. So we have rescheduled it to. to Okay, well, that wasn't what we were expecting, but okay. <laughs> we're so the our team, so we are throwing in Fitz, also known as our Pac-Man, and uh, saying Xavier is throwing in a Dr. Mario, which, frankly, honest, uh, we didn't see there before, but we'll see what happens. Um, starting off, just kind of going into neutral. Yeah, head into this match, Falpo undefeated in the Galax 7-0, St. Xavier 2-4, but St. Xavier is much improved from last semester, um, a team that we did beat by five stocks and four stocks last semester. Um, the Doc being a little bit of a surprise for sure. Um, you know, their best player we're anticipating is the Kazuya, and then they also have a Yoshi for sure, um, those two. And then we're also expecting a Zelda, but, um, you know, if they're throwing out a Doc first, I mean, definitely expecting Kazuya still. I mean, our last game, we were expecting a bunch of different characters, and we didn't get any of them, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, just kind of staying in neutral, not, no characters really getting into an advantage state. Like, there's a few combos here and there, but mostly getting out of it. Never mind, then, speaking of which, if it's Pac-Man getting out of... Pac-Man Pac getting a lot of damage there from Dr. Mario taking... Uh, nope, good DI there, Fitz. Um... Up smash will kill. Uh, very good kill move by Dr. Mario. Um, that down B we saw earlier getting them into disadvantage has so much priority. And then also another thing to big watch, watch out for. Um, it's going to be tougher for Pac-Man to play that projectile game in neutral. One, because of the pills that we're seeing a lot here. But also the cape uh, reflector, which we saw in the Galga on the first stock. Um, but this Pac-Man doing a really good job. Looks like he's aware of the matchup. Knows the fire hydrant interactions. Um, so Valpo early down 9-8. Unfortunately, he was not prepared for that, though. Fitz trying to get him with that kill confirmed, but unfortunately missing. Uh, Mario's still taking this advantage state just because he knows that um, Pac-Man has to lead in first, which is a serious disadvantage for Pac-Man because you always want the opponent to have to approach you, and when you're in a deficit, you have to approach the opponent. Yeah, also got to be really careful that cape on the fire hydrant, too, can do a ton of damage. Um, but Pac-Man just struggling to get around these pills. Um, doing a great job in neutral, which is usually fits his kind of uh, specialty, for sure. Unfortunately, he is very high in this last stock. Um, so Dr. Mario is heavily in the league right now, taking another stock with Dr. Mario at two. But we have seen stranger things happen before. Unfortunately, Dr. Mario getting fits out of... Oh, and just the wrong, wrong read out of there. Yeah, Cape turning around the forward smash. Um, Dr. Mario... Typically not a very good character, but honestly not too bad in this matchup. Has a lot of kill power, but also um, biggest weakness is getting edge guarded, and he dies very early once off stage. So. Nice. Oh, almost got that right there. This Dr. Mario has been able to dodge a lot of uh, Pac-Man's options going into here. Hey, getting a bell, but not being able to utilize it. As long as Dr. Mario doesn't get that, though, because it should be good. The bell, if you don't know, is a stun and makes it to, it's, if at high percents, you are basically probably going to get a kill confirmed, depending yep. on if it works, like, depending on if, like, you hit your, like, up B or whatnot. Good grab here, gonna get Dr. Mario off stage, like I mentioned, awful recovery, but nice air dodge. Getting that air dodge, trying to read it, um, trying to read going to ledge either and just missing it. These pills are really doing a lot against it. Um, yeah, I mean, does 6% a piece, uh, and that adds up very quickly. It's hit probably at least 20 or 30 just in this fight. And the bell's going to hit, able to get a back air there. Ooh, yes. and forward smash is a big kill, able to even it up here. Still going in with the percent deficit, um, but that's all. But the best thing we can ask for that, with especially such a lead that Mario had right there, is just taking those two stocks. Yeah. Or, oh, just gonna didn't die. Almost kill. It almost did it. So good DI there, just not making it, just barely. 
Um, but still going into this fight, we are seeing a seven, six to seven, which is not bad, keeping it pretty even there. Um, thinking about who we're probably gonna send in, um, I'm not exactly sure what we're looking at for uh, player-wise. Um, most likely we do have a K rule sitting in the back lines. I'm not, I don't think Josh is switching it up today. And yeah. I'm not sure what Chris is going for because, again, Chris made the entire roster. So who knows what Chris picks? Uh, oh, but we are seeing um, something. I uh, can't say that. Yeah, Josh has been working on his Rob too. Does have a better matchup into the Kazuya, but um, Josh has been working really hard on this Kazuya matchup. It is extremely favored um, towards Kazuya, but um, Josh being a really good player, um, King K. Rule is uh, has the disadvantage in almost every matchup in the game. So nothing new for Josh, but uh, you know, first we got to worry about this last stock for the Dr. Mario and King K. Rule. I feel like does a really good job, um, just because it's another low tier. Um, so you know, kind of on an even playing field there um, and he has a little more options to deal with the pills in neutral so yeah going into those pills those are one of the biggest weaknesses of uh pac-man there and funny thing from c29 is like is that this has kind of been trained from him on the entire roster because uh c29 just likes to gun camp people on joker um and that's basically what Mario is, Dr. Mario is doing that entire time. <laughs> yeah, it's just utilizing his projectiles and not letting the opponent um, approach at all. And uh, Wes has definitely done a lot of training <laughs> with the team on that for sure. And the rest of the team does not like that uh, because it is mildly annoying, as he would put it. <laughs> yeah, not super interactive gameplay for sure. But uh, we will be going to Battlefield and hopping right back in. Valpo down seven stalks to six here. This shouldn't be uh, too difficult for K. Rule. Mario does have to drop two stocks right here. So we are waiting, just kind of waiting for these slow stocks to just go off. All right, talk time. All right, Ari on this game with the pills, trying to throw them as far as he can, but just because of their like location, uh, but Josh is just not afraid of them at like all. Going in and getting a lot of damage here. Um, and Dr. Mario is able to do some, but dodging that combo right there, 66% is pretty good. Oh, that is That's a SF. dead dog. That is dead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably would have lived with the up B, but uh, then again, probably would have just got edge carded, put back in the same situation. Um, so, I mean, like we said, Dr. Mario with a pretty awful recovery. <laughs> um, so even up six to six here, big for the King K rule, big for Valpo. Um, only slight disadvantage here is they will get to choose who they want to play against the K rule and also what stage. Um, K rule being one of the better players on our team here. So, uh, we'll be interesting to see what we get next. My guess is going to be the Kazuya. Um, that is definitely like an idea. My thought process is like, I'm not exactly sure all of the matchups for King K rule stuff. I know you know that better than I do, but um, thinking about who their players are, I could also see a Yoshi or Zelda and wanting to end on the K rule, be depending on how well they think, like, or not K rule, the Kazuya, yeah. depending on how well they want to, like, eat on that final yeah. player. Because typically we tend to lean tend to leave like our strongest or most full characters in like any situation as our last one. And I think that's for the most teams too, because they want to make, they want to see if they can put um, the best, like their best players, best versatile, big choices so that they can try and make that comeback depending on how things are going. Yeah, having your best players at anchor is never a bad idea. Um, it is interesting to see how teams kind of switch up their lineups and stuff Because um, you know most teams some like have a rhythm where they have like the exact same players starting their anchoring some teams switch it up um, We're kind of in the middle. I we, we sometimes have a tendency. Oh, oh you but, are uh, correct. So this is gonna be an interesting fight here um, as Henry was saying Kazuya is a uh, King K. Rule is in disadvantage against Kazuya Yeah, this right is an extremely bad matchup for K. Rule, which is why the only reason I think they weren't anchoring him. Um, 
but yeah, has very good combo game. K. Rule is uh, very combo susceptible. Um, yeah, um, and it's just a heavy, massive hitbox. Um, yeah, gonna start off three stalks to three stalks here. A lot of neutral game going on here. Just some chip damage from the oh, almost getting punished there, but missing it. Belly armor are saving K. Rule, saving Josh right there. K. Rule doing a great job of just not playing the game and just staying as far yeah. away as possible. Kazuya gonna go down early here. Because mm -hmm. he was he was in that place where um, he could have gotten punished by. Um, he was probably going to be punished by Josh regardless of what he did. Unfortunately, right there, um, King K. Rule just does have a very good recovery. Going into this, uh, Kazuya throwing out some combos, kind of trying to get... But main focus right here for Josh is trying to get the Kazuya to approach him. But that is also kind of dangerous because depending on like what move the Kazuya leans in with, it might just end up, unfortunately... They rule very heavy character. Um, being a heavy character does help him right there. 36%. Good not tech. dead here, though. Yeah, that throw will also kill very early, send at a disgusting angle. Um, one big thing to watch out for is Kazuya does have a reflect, um, as we yep. saw right there. So K. Rool, if he has enough time, can counter back and kill Kazuya at 0%. Um, but Kazuya has a multiplier on his reflector, so it will pretty much also kill K. Rule extremely early if he reflects it. So got to be careful of that. Um, but Josh is definitely very aware of that, um, you know, because we've ran into a lot of those situations. Because I play Kazuya, um, so today I was warming up with the guys, but they've seen Kazuya a decent amount, even though you know we don't have one technically on our team or many uh, in the conference. Mm -hmm. Just getting a lot of extra credit here, but Kazuya is in his uh, better form, which makes his damages, his attacks do a lot more damage going into this. I'm not sure what Joss is planning here. Oh, um, misclick. Yeah. And he SDs. Oh, that's unfortunate right there. Um, but this hill is going very well, evening it up right there. Let's take his back, Josh. Let's run it back, and let's not do that again, please. Yeah, <laughs> yeah dying at 4%, not great, especially when uh, he was doing so well in this battle. He was doing so well, and he could have gone in potentially with two stocks. Uh, missing that full combo right there. Unfortunately, getting hit with the jab is not going to do too amazing. But, um... Trying to read a go to ledge, just not do, Josh just doesn't do it. Getting stunned in that, this is not looking for a good place for Josh right here. Uh, really needing these combos to just not work for Kazuya, but unfortunately they do a lot of time. Unfortunately missing the punish there. At 54%, Kazuya could die at a certain place. Not exactly sure though where, but we gotta look and see. Nice, I like that. Kazuya oh. opting to go high there, good recovery. Interesting choices, not a lot of reaction time. Um, kind of even it up right now. Both characters can probably kill at this percent. Oh, oh. I'm missing that nice. The forward tilt is gonna yes. do it. And that is an amazing job from Josh right there. Killing the Kazuya. Um, taking down such a um, bad matchup for him. So, looking at this, uh, I'm trying to think who might be a good character to send in. Because huh. Zelda has a lot of projectiles, but, cause, but um, King K. Rule does have the protection belly armor and his own counter. Whereas Yoshi um, doesn't, only has like the egg, I think. I think that's his only. My guess is Yoshi. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but yeah, I think Josh did a really good job in that match. Uh, specifically, if he did an SD at 4 or 5% there, um, would be in a lot better position. But at the end of the day, he was able to win the battle, did a really good job. Um, did a really good job of just staying away from the Kazuya and interacting as little as possible, um, which is kind of the West Classic, the West Special. Um, but yeah, I thought uh, he played that really well. Um, and we will get some map bans going through here. But Valpo holding a four to three stock lead. Um, Josh doing a great job of take, being able to take 
four stocks already. Um, so yeah, Valpo with the lead uh, as we get further into this game one in the crew battle against say, Xavier. Main thing that uh, Josh is going to be looking for here is just one extra stock that will put Chris at an advantage when we sunk him in next. Yep. And that puts the other team at a disadvantage because they have to two three. They can't. They have to one three actually. Yeah. It is also big already that um, Chris is going to know what character they're putting in. I mean, we're fairly confident on what person we're going to put in. But, you know, not what character. That heavily depends on what they yeah. play. Um, so going to have an option to play multiple different characters, whether it's like the Ness, Falcon. Uh, he was throwing out some random characters today he might play. You never he, know with him. Like I said, he mains the entire roster. We yeah. don't know. Your guess is as good as ours, which for is funny because he's on our team, so we should know. But um, For all we know, he could just decide he's playing Piranha Plant today. Yeah. But uh, the pick uh, stage will be going to Kalos. Mm -hmm. Oh, ooh, I was wrong this time. It is going to be the Zelda. All right, so this is going to be uh, interesting going into this. Josh is going to have to lose two stocks right here. So I haven't actually seen too much of Zelda. Um, I do, like... I know Alex does play Zelda a lot, so going into this matchup, uh, they should have some relative experience for... Yeah. What are you doing, Josh? Yeah, Alex has been playing a lot of Zelda the past two weeks, especially when we were playing against UMU last week. They also had a Zelda, Zelda we were anticipating. So we've kind of had two weeks straight of Zelda practice, so hopefully uh, the players are pretty comfortable in the matchup at this point. Once again, another character with a reflector there as K. Rool gets hit. K. Rool taking a fair amount of damage right now. Um, getting, uh, getting hit by that side B is just not going to be well in the long term. Uh, misses the his first smash attack. 81% already is just not looking good for K. Rool. Very good choice on Saint Xavier's side. Uh, not really much going into it. I believe she won't be able to use her side. What are we doing? Yeah, Zelda's just kind of hanging out here. Um, doesn't really want to interact with K. Rool as much as possible. Nice down throw into dash. Uh, dash tag confirm. Ooh, nice great roll. read. Ooh, I hate that. <laughs> yeah, utilizing the uh, warrior sword guy uh, on the recovery to cover her uh, bases there. And the back air will kill. So huge for Valpo there. Going to have an advantage going into the last game no matter what. Yep. And just waiting, trying to get these side beasts. Using it a fairly an awful lot of mount. And using it to its full charge too. Some of those sites, lesser charged versions could also do very well too, because you're not using them. Missing that punish right there, knowing that she was going to. Oh, oh that'll do it. And that back air takes it. So like you said, really big for Valpo to get a stock there, um, and they're able to do it. So uh, we'll give Chris kind of a even bigger advantage heading into this last game, but St. Xavier keeping it close for sure. Um, a team that, you know, we thought improved a lot from last semester to this semester, and they're definitely showing it. Um, I mean, we're undefeated right now. I think they're 2-4, and 3-4, and four, um, but doing a great job so far in game one. Yeah, looking at this, I'm not really, like we said, not sure what Chris is going to pull out. I don't know. It could be a Captain Falcon. It could be a Wolf. It could be Plant. It could be Ness. Could be, I don't know. None of us know. Yeah. Why would we know? <laughs> But uh, the good thing is he knows he's going into a Zelda. Uh, he got to see a stock of how the Zelda played. I know he was watching the VODs and stuff. Um, so I'm sure he has a game plan of who he wants to play. Um, and us in the booth will get a quick peek at it as the stage bands come through. Characters get selected. Um, that was that was interesting, Chris. That, yeah. that, was, that was interesting. That was a little cursed, honestly. But uh, winding down in game one, we uh, got ourselves a match for sure. Still uh, only one stock advantage. So I guess other news in Valpo Esports. Uh, later tonight at 7 p.m., our Varsity Rocket League team has an NACC game. Um, and then on Saturday, we are hosting Manchester for Smash Bros. at 11 and Rocket League at 10 a.m. Um, so, you know, Smash will definitely be the clash of the Titans. Um, Assuming we would win this game, both teams would be 8-0 heading into that match, so that'll be a big one. And then 
I will have a Rocket League, but also an in-person event, so really exciting for the program, for our players. Um, have a storied history with Manchester and Smash for sure. Um, but getting back into this game, we're going to PS2, and uh, we do have the Wolf for Chris. Wolf. So a little more common pick from him recently. Wolf has been very nice, uh, just compared to Captain Falcon. Captain Falcon's just so much more, like, has to get in to your character way more than because of their projectile, like, situation. Um, because Captain Falcon is a brawly character and he has to, like, run up to you. He doesn't really have a lot to deal with any of his any projectiles, whereas Wolf does have a few other. Yeah, he has laser, which is a really good projectile, and also his reflector. Um, you know, if a laser gets reflected back at him, he can reflect it back. So, has a little bit of way to deal with it, and also has um, pretty quick mobility, somewhat a falcon, but um, doing great so far. Has a big uh, percentage lead. Yep, getting hit by uh, Dark Knight there, but just only taking 24% damage right there. Talking up B, I'm not, I'm not, it's okay. I'm not say. I'm not hating it. That's what I was looking for. Uh, taking 95% already, trying to read a roll, but just not doing it. And that would have been a very good opportunity for reflectors, but it just wasn't worth it there. And that's that. <laughs> up smash will do it there. Valpo up two stocks, last character for Saint Xavier here in game three, and um, Chris is looking cool, calm, collected, playing very clean, very well, uh, yep. very few mistakes. Playing incredibly well going into this, 55% to 33, and up two stocks. Oh. This is not what you like to see when you're in place. Could the Zelda pull it back? I wouldn't be surprised, but... This does require a lot of getting Chris off his game, and he is saying, no, I'm on my game right now. Okay, no, never mind, Chris. Please get back on your game. <laughs> yeah. Um, does die, but uh, has a lot of uh, room to work with still here, as Zelda's already at kill percent from the smash attack. As, uh, we do see him fishing for a couple forward smashes here. Yep. Trying to get... Uh, trying to get the Zelda to take the bait, just kind of keeping her, keeping his distance away from Dark Knight, just because that's what she has been using so much. I don't blame her, as it's a very good move, but there's not, but it is kind of being uh, very predictable right now. So, that'll uh, do it. Grab. Oh, great DI. <laughs> <laughs> The and last like, back throw was so close that, you know, I assumed he had it, but uh, a little closer mm -hmm. to center stage. But the app smash, will that will for sure do it. <laughs> um, so great job by Valpo there, taking game one uh, with a two stock advantage. Sorry about that. Um, but yeah, St. Xavier definitely looking improved, taking them seriously for sure. Got our top three players in there. Um, yeah, you got any additional thoughts on game one before we head to break? Really? Oh, we'll uh, be right back with game two. See you guys.
All right, and we are back, leading Pac-Man again into the Dr. Mario. Um, hopefully, we can see a little less camping from Dr. Mario, but it is kind of optimal, so I'm not gonna, <laughs> I'm not gonna judge him too much yep. for that. You know, he's only got so many good options, and Pill is one of them. But uh, you know, we saw this matchup in game one, and it went to Dr. Mario's favor by one stock. So, would like to fit see Fitz win this one, but we will see. Looking, um, continuing to see uh, just a lot of camping from the pills. Uh, it's getting a not. I don't think that was meant to come, but it did. So that's nice, at least. Forty-four percent to forty, keeping it even right now. Um, still keeping it even, just taking the little chip damage, like of course. And this is unfortunately causing the advantage to kind of fall into Dr. Mario's favor because Pac-Man doesn't really have any solid options to do camping with either. Um, now, if we were looking at a different character or something, or um, we could also see a lot more camping. Fortunately, Fitz is kind of getting stuck into that combo right now. Dr. Mario taking advantage right now. And Grab taking him E3. Oh! Ooh. Not punished though for that. That was very good. Dr. Mario just not landing it. Barely making it back on. Yeah, great job utilizing the cape there. Dr. Mario has uh, definitely played this matchup before and knows what's happening. Um, but even in this first stock, Dr. Mario, if he gets knocked off stage, uh, will very likely lead to death. But Dr. Mario, if he gets a smash attack, can kill very early as well. Throwing the fire hydrant down, taking already some good damage. Kind of just predicting that bell. Goes for a grab instead. Ooh, that's very nice. Uh, throwing a strawberry though, throwing a cherry, and we're back to the camping again. We love this. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna have a uh, long match in this game one, I bet. I can already tell because both players just don't want to go in. And unfortunately with camping, this means that Fitz will have to go in more though. Um, taking that uh, up side beat into that, Mario is still very, still very high. Uh, 149, 51, Sackman going first, but just one attack probably will take him. One good kill move will probably take him going into the um, shielding that, that hydrant. Nice back and that's air. his back. And that's a back, back air. And back air seals it. Starting yep. it at 14 to 0. Four minutes in, two minutes, and we only lost the first stock already. This is looking very interesting. Almost three minutes, actually. A good combo there by Fitz. But yeah, like you said, we, we're still on both players with stock two under four minutes. So we'll be interested to keep an eye on that as this uh, game I'm, goes on. What happens if it goes to a. Final death. So, uh, whoever is winning in stocks uh, wins the fight. If they are tied in stocks, whoever has the lower percent wins. I see. So it doesn't like go to sudden death. It just like. Ah, I see. Yeah. Hi, is it yeah. So you don't actually play out the sudden death, although that would be interesting. <laughs> yeah, this is very campy right now. Dr. Mario missing that though. Uh, getting the bell. Fortunately, not. Not letting Dr. Mario get it. Uh, expecting the bell to be thrown. Ooh, Ooh just unspaced. Not... Yeah, just out of range with, for the forward smash. Mm -hmm. Pac-Man going first, going against Xavier. 105, hopefully getting this another one. Let's hopefully not see those go to uh, final hide. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I've ever seen a timeout on our stream. Um... I don't know if it's happened in the uh, GLEC yet this year in this conference. Um, but you know, you see it every once in a while, once in a blue moon. But big forward smash gonna even up game one here. Mm -hmm. Keeping it even, Fitz is just... The only thing that's really struggling right now is he just can't get any of his kill confirms off on Dr. Mario right now. Continuing their camping game. Um, very fun. <laughs> Galgo looking for a combo, not gonna hit. And just continuing neutral. <laughs> Camping neutral, you know, very fun stuff. 
almost oh, and Mario gets into advantage, but both players still sticking at relatively the same amount. Still keeping the fight fairly even. Two minutes and minutes in with uh, two minutes to go is just remaining. Unfortunately, still kind of just sitting here at camp. Uh, apparently, it's camp Pokemon Stadium because we are not leaving it. We are seeing this. Oh, oh, thank gosh. Takes it back, fortunately, due to side B and back, uh, up B just being super powerful on Pac-Man, just getting the perfect like angle and everything. But he is going to have to play super careful going into this, trying to get his side B to run off, and this Dr. Mario just knows what's coming. It, it's not looking too good, getting the throw on going into one minute till overtime. Um, if it did go into if it did go into timeout, this would be very interesting. Yeah, the winner would be who has the less percent, um, but still have a minute. You know, with Pac-Man being at kill percent and Doc able to be edge guarded, I don't think we'll see it, but it would be kind of exciting. It'd be very exciting. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I've ever. Yeah, like I said, we we haven't seen it at all this season or since I've been here. So. Well, and like I said, we're kind of at camp. Uh, can Pokemon Sam right now, so I don't think either of them yeah. really want to. Oh, uh, and that might be kill. That's yeah, that. that'll do it. 38 seconds remaining. Ugh, can Pokemon Center apparently. Um, not Co Pokemon Center. Um, <laughs> that was a long one. Yep, so uh, same situation as we were in last game here. Uh, curious to see if we'll go with the K rule again or switch it up and have Chris go in. <laughs> Or just an entirely new person as well. Um, but yeah, San Xavier with the stock lead uh, beginning in game two again. Yep, I'm um, looking into this. We're not really sure who they're going to throw in again. Could just keep the same lineup. Wouldn't be surprised. Wouldn't be new. Yeah, worked last time, so. <laughs> yeah. Fair enough, but they could just be expecting it and leave with something great. Yeah, I'm personally more confident uh, with the K rule and Chris into the Dr. Mario as the Pac-Man looked like he hadn't played that matchup much um, and was just having a tough time dealing with the pills. Um, kind of took him off his normal game, normal progression. Um, but yeah, that was an interesting matchup to watch, and uh, we got to see a lot of it. Six and a half minutes of it. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that was a long one. Yeah. Is uh, shorter than the NECC games, though, as we only have three players uh, playing in these games instead of four in NECC. So, a little bit shorter, but this set, you know, might take the same amount of time as the NECC one. Yeah, who knows? Who? Um, because typically, um, our players do like to make it very quick. Um, Chris and Josh are known for doing that. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, haven't, um, notably have not dropped a game uh, this entire season. Uh, so they're 7-0, but they're also 14-0 in game count. Um, so looking to continue that uh, today as well. Um, but, you know, they are down in game two right now. Back to change the stage. Oh, never mind, just changing music. Yep. So apparently it sounds like we're going to the same stage yet again. <laughs> Always some downtime in between games, um, especially with such a long game, too. But uh, St. Xavier should be ready in a minute here. Stage is chosen. Don't have to switch their character either, so, and we will be hopping into it now. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> okay, going into this, going, um, so we are leading with K. Rule into this. Dr. Mario is going to have to take two stocks off for this fight. Hopefully, we don't see any more camp Pokemon Center. Uh, <laughs> Well, we probably will see a little bit, but not hopefully not six and a half minutes. <laughs> well, there's only one stock on the side of Dr. Mario, so highly unlikely if we did, it would be absurd. Yes, uh, it would be absurd. I'm just saying um, it would be interesting. <laughs> I would be astonished. <laughs> I would just be impressed. Yeah, so last time uh, we saw the K rule go in second in this exact same situation, uh, was able to take the... Uh, Stock first, though, so hoping for a repeat of that. But um, yep. K roll up down 60% right now. 
taking uh, 73 da damage going against this Mar Dr. Mario. Already uh, getting close to the kill percent for him. Dr. Mario is just struggling to... Uh, Ooh, great read on that roll. Mm -hmm. Uh, fortunately, unfortunately for Cave Rule, uh, he is going to need all three stocks for going against the Kazuya if the Kazuya plays next. Um, we'll just seeing more camping because, of course. Um, and just, but fortunately now the players are very even. Um, going in 87 to now 104. Um, both. Not both characters are at kill percent. Dr. Mario is at kill percent right here. Yep, King so. K. Rule, one of the heavier characters in the game. Um, Dr. Mario does have a lot of kill power, but prob oh, <laughs> probably not quite yet. Maybe a fully charged up smash. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that would do it. Um, but I... Uh, <laughs> that would be hopeful that wouldn't be something that would happen. Yep. You don't really want a shield break. Unfortunately, getting that up B, taking, um, taking K rule to just a very high, uh, oh. Wow. That so was close. <laughs> Josh panicking a little bit there with the air dodge, but still able to get the punish with the down smash. Um, you know, we are seeing an exact replica of game one so far. Um, we did not pre-record this and play over the exact same game. Um. um yeah. <laughs> I'd be interested to watch Kazi again um, in this matchup. Um, but uh, K. Rule did a really good job of not interacting with Kazi because what Kazi wants to do is be as close as possible and fight constantly. Um, and that's where he's strongest. So if we see that matchup, expect another long game. Yeah. <laughs> um, kind of going to be on our uh, behalf, though, this time with K. Rule not want to interact <laughs> with Kazi. Um. Uh, Valpo seems to be Valpo and Saint Xavier seem to really like long games today. Yeah. <laughs> um, other two options are the Zelda and then also the Yoshi, which we did not see in Game One. Um, but you know, it's okay. We got a long game because we got an early start today on this Friday night. So even after this game, still plenty of time to uh, play more Smash after the game, which you know sometimes happens. Yep. <laughs> to be like, wow, that was a long game. Okay, let's go play some more Smash now. <laughs> And there still is a fair amount of stuff happening later. Obviously, we are streaming yep. um, Rocket League, but there is a few other games going on in yep. the background, like Varsity. Uh, Varsity. Uh, oh, Academy Overwatch has a game going on at the yep. same time as Rocket League. So. so we have three games all happening at 7 p.m. Um, the one that will be streamed is Varsity Rocket League. Um, Rocket League, or Fridays, are NECC Rocket League. Um but yeah, speaking of the Academy Overwatch team, they were able to get on the board last night with a big win. I know that's the team you uh, are on, so maybe you want to talk a little bit about um, that. I feel I don't really know. I thought you guys looked say. really good. Eh. I know you said that uh, the team, you know, might not have been as strong as some of the teams you've played, but I thought you guys looked really good. So yeah, it was definitely not a uh, very strong. Um, I definitely did some silly mistakes going into it. Um, but, I mean, it worked out in our favor, so we'll see. Yeah. We're going to Kalos yet, ag uh, Kalos yet again. It seems like PS2 and Kalos are the favorite So, Zelda was the one that struck to Kalos, but Kazuya also good on Kalos in this matchup because somewhat similar to FD, you just have those, like, far side platforms. Um, but you do have a lot of, like, empty space. Um, but yeah, we did see this earlier um, with the Zelda. This was the stage that she counterpicked to. Um, so yeah, still, still a lot of options. Waiting here, um, waiting for players to switch around, move around. Yeah, I think uh, what's happening here is Saint Xavier. I mean, they're in this game, um, and you know, in the Gleck, we're a very um, reputable smash team so they're like hey guys we're in this game like we need to focus up and take it here um so taking their time is you know definitely appropriate for them um and we will z the zelda um who once again struck kalos in game one place uh kazuya might not just not be as confident going and just after what happened yeah, uh, might be anchoring uh, like you said last time nice to have uh, one of your better players anchoring Great combo starter by Zelda. 
I don't think they were expecting to play uh, Zelda right here. <laughs> yeah, gets the hitbox extension on the forward tilt with the uh, swordy guy. What's that move called? The down B? Zelda's yeah. swordy dude? Uh, no, that's her. No, that's her. I think that's her side. Um. <laughs> it's, it's her down B. I just don't know what it's called. I thought you called it the oh, name last time. Oh, yeah, Dark time. Knight. Yeah. Oh, Dark Knight. Okay, there you go. Dark Knight. Um, so that's from, uh... I don't know what the moves are called, I just know what they do. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, getting 113%, K rule not looking in a good place right here. Yeah. Um, going to have to go low just to recover again. Using warp there, um, not moving though, could have pulled up, could have pulled something. Uh, still just getting caught in all of these, uh, grabs with Zelda taking only 44 damage here. Not fun right here for yeah, K. Rool, uh, Pizza Man struggling in this one so far just to kind of find his in. Ooh, does get the super armor on that uh, side B. That up B will kill at this percent. Um, not a great move in neutral, but you do see her using it a lot because it does a lot of percent and will kill. So. I think that B uh, neutral B, Nairus Love, still a very good reflector. Just a good thing to just help space it out. But unfortunately, Josh going down, losing his stock. Fortunately, um, depending on what happens, he could, he could, could have killed her there. Unfortunately, she was just very aware of what was happening, and warp apparently goes farther than I remember it going. <laughs> Ooh, nice, is, uh, yeah. great combo backwards crown into up air there. Um, Pizza Man very familiar with, um, you know, how the crown interacts and stuff. Yep, Josh finally, Josh, yeah, Josh getting his footing down right here. Uh, a little bit more than he was earlier. I think he was a little bit of the shock of seeing the Zelda. I don't think they were expecting it either. Yeah, I mean, he was down 70, 80%. Now he's kind of evened up. Uh, as I say that, big yep. forward air into up air. Um, kind of down 50, 60% uh, again. Zelda is using her Dark Knight a lot here. Uh, not really any good, like, um, what am I saying? It is a very strong move, but Zelda does SD super huge for Valpo. Um, St. Xavier to take a game or win from Valpo cannot be making mistakes, especially like SD. Yep. Um, yep. Um, unfortunately, missing the read with that. Getting um, Dark Knight only doing only getting half charge there. Let's try and get this kill. Come on. That yeah, would be huge if uh, K. Rool completely turned around this game. Um, now in the lead by quite a bit here, looking to win by two stocks actually. Zelda not looking, Zelda yeah. kind of... Watch uh, the reflect in the counter here on that cannonball. Josh is kind of cooking right now. 102% but not dying. That, nope, that doesn't do it. K. Rool's uh, recovery is a little bit busted. <laughs> yeah. K. Rool's super heavy, good recovery. Oh, and that might do it. Oh! Oh, misses it, unfortunately. We'll get it that time, though. Unfortunately, right there, uh, Josh was doing super well at reading, getting his footing down, and just being able to see the little tiny openings that Zelda was doing, finding ways to avoid her Dark Knight, etc. Just... Yeah, I mean, Josh saw the Zelda make a crucial error, completely took advantage of it, and now Valpo up 5-3, to three. Um, you know, when we were down 6-5 to five just a second ago. So a little yep. mini reverse three stock, I guess. Uh, didn't lose both of them. But able to get three stocks on his answer there is huge for Valpo. Mm -hmm. um, we'll have a comfortable lead going into their Kazia. Um, also gets to reel that percent all the way from 150 back to zero. Um, Josh and Chris both very comfortable in this matchup, even though it's one they don't like to play. I don't think many people like to play it, but at least they have played it a lot. Um, but yeah, we will see what this Kazuya can do as an anchor, because at the oh. end of the day, it is a really good matchup, and Kazuya can zero to death you um, if he plays it correctly. Well, I mean, it could also just not be their Kazuya. I don't know why it would be their Kazuya. Like, I don't know what they're thinking, but yeah, we'll they, see. The only other character that we are aware of going into this game that they have is a Yoshi. Yeah, um, but it is going to be the Kazuya. Um, yeah, Kazuya is kind of what we anticipated as their best player. So, you know, even though maybe he didn't feel great in this matchup in the first game, you know, at some point you're going to be forced to play it, and we'll see it again here. Yep. 
just gonna take uh, one stock and then uh, what is it called? Taunt to get into yep. the map. I'm not sure if he did a double taunt there. Oh. <laughs> oh, great oh, down no. smash. Josh, no. Oh, and this Kazuya oh, Josh. does not. <laughs> oh, Josh with the zero to death. Let's go. Josh, oh. Unfortunately, we'll see down throw electric. Not going to get too much off of it. Good 44% there. Yep. Kazuya, like I said, can easily zero to death. Not easily, but is a confirmed combo. Yep, he does have several confirmed combos that do bring most characters to death from zero. Uh, K Rule's sitting at like 49 right here, but Kazuya's sitting at 82. This is not looking good for the Kazuya and St. Xavier. Yeah, I mean, Josh was looking, to be honest, not great uh, at the beginning of the Zelda, but I mean, looking phenomenal here against this Kazuya. Um, does get the uh, input throw there, nice throw. Um, ooh, nice uh, nair, but not gonna kill just yet. Um, Josh saying, uh, maybe we should just make this game quick. Yeah, and I mean, this this game has sped up a lot. Yes. Um, going into this, uh, K. Rule is missing his crown though, so that will yeah. be affecting him. Does in. have it back now. Thanks. Oh, and that forward tilt has so much range. However, this is not a lost match just yet. Kazuya does have very strong counters for St. Xavier and can potentially pull one of these off. Uh, trying to get the punish there, but unfortunately, Josh reads him instead. Trying to juggle a little bit here, getting him some jab off, getting some like early, uh, getting the, uh, what is it called? I don't know, perfect dodge, something like that. Yeah, K. Rool having a tough time getting back to center stage here, and that reflect will kill, and that's ah. going to take the stock. So great reflector right in K. Rool's face, like we talked about, will kill extremely early. Um, but I mean, ultimately, um, Joss did his job and more. He took five stocks in game two. Yeah. Um, he took. I think he took. He took four or five in game one, but doing a great job, he nonetheless. No, he, he's five in game. Five oh, no, he's taking no. five in game one, six in game two. Yeah, six in yeah. game two. Because... Sorry. Yeah, that was my bad. I haven't uh, taken math class uh, in a while. It's, it's okay. <laughs> um, I was just thinking back to who killed who. Yeah. Um, going into this, Chris is um, – Chris may not like this, but we'll see how Chris is feeling. Um, not really sure what he's going to pull out. He might just yeah. try and go quick with it. Uh, might choose a Captain Falcon. Might try a Ness. Again, he means the whole roster. We don't know what he's going to pick. Oh, but uh, picking a, a possibly choice. very advantageous matchup that I also have never seen him play in my entire life. I have also never seen him play that in my entire um, life. He did play the pit against my Kazuya as we were warming up for this game. Another option we could see. Um, but was looking at that Palu for a second, which, you know, to be honest, playing at a good enough level to take a stock isn't extremely difficult you know some characters take a longer to learn and have a harder learning curve palutena um her combos are a little more simplistic uh just to kind of nair five times and then after that just play neutral um but yeah looks like we are choosing town and city for the stage um and kind of just waiting on chris to decide what character he wants to play and we will see a first timer for sure on the stream and also possibly first timer for Chris. I have not, like I said, I have never seen him play this character in my entire life. I'm, I'm sure he has played the character. Yeah. He has played I'd hope every so for character. sure. Yeah. He has played every character in the roster. Um, he just mains half the roster. Yep. You know, there's a little bit of a difference there. Um, but you know, Palu does do good in this matchup. So I see where he's coming from on it. And, um, you know, I've questioned Chris on his uh, character choices before, and I'm always wrong. So, you know, at this yep. point, I just got to have confidence in him and just let him do what he wants to do and go for it. Yep, this Kazuya might be shaking his boots a little bit going in this one Yeah, he was like, Palo. I didn't know Valpo had a Palu. Neither did we. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, we, we yeah. would have found out much sooner, and we did not know. <laughs> yeah, Kazuya, though, very volatile character. Um, 
you know, capable of a three stock for sure as a character more than others, but we will see the five nares come through. Just three, excuse me. The unfortunate <laughs> this time. Uh, and after that, we'll kind of just use the neutral B and side B and stay as far away as possible. Yep, already doing a lot of damage here. Chris still at 0%. Uh, getting some nice chip damage against this Kazuya. Just him not being able to get in at all. Yeah, nice down throw turnaround back air there. Finding different ways to just not get attacked. Unfortunately, though, getting attacked for the first time. But remember, Chris has three stocks. Kazuyo has one. Even if he manages to take off two stocks right here, he's still at 82%. Yeah, and Kazuyo hasn't been able to get this electric in an air conversion. Um, if he's not able to do that, um, he's not able to zero to death. So very low likelihood that that will happen. Um, does have Rage Drive online, but being at over 100% with one to three stocks looking extremely good for Valpo here. Yep, this is looking very good. Unfortunately, getting that first hit. Halu does die at 70 from Rage Drive. <laughs> uh, very fun there. Yeah. Um, getting that first hit. Come on, Chris. Let's not do... Let's let's get some good things. Just trying to watch this. Unfortunately, Miss Reeves, because he is going to do. Still staying at 26%. Not bad. Again, second stock going against a one-stock Kazuya here. Kazuya is heavy, so not sure if back throw will kill here. Back air might not kill either. Um, so maybe going to take a few more hits here before we see something, but that, that will is, do yeah. it. <laughs> Kazuya <laughs> very heavy, but it. not that heavy. Yep. So but Valpo is going to take it. 2-0 against St. Xavier, improving to 8-0 on the season with perfect game count of 16-0. Clap it yep. up for your uh, Smash Collect there. So um, that will be it for Smash Bros. Collect for today. Yep. Um, not sure what's going to happen tomorrow, but tonight we do have some Rocket League, so tune in for later. But, yeah, we'll yep. see you then. I don't know See you next casting. time. Uh, <laughs> 7, 7 p.m. versus Rocket League. Tomorrow we have Rocket League at 10 a.m. and then Smash versus another undefeated team at 11. Um, but we'll see you guys at 7 p.m. for our Rocket League stream. And uh, it's been a pleasure. My name is Henry Speedy Killing Ninja. And I'm Aira. See you next time. See ya.